What is going on, you beautiful subscribers? How's it going? Toromoto here. Gonna do an interesting video. Probably one of the dumber videos that I've ever done. Um, talking about talking about how to ride your motorcycle in the snow. Cause uh, as you can see, it this is kind of the first time this year, and it, this is the last week before Christmas. This is the first time this year that snow is actually starting to accumulate on the ground. So I told myself at the beginning of the year, you know, when I bought my bike, I was like, oh no, I'm not going to ride this late into the year, blah, blah, blah. It's not something I need to worry about. Well, you know what? Global warming has been really kind to us this year. And uh, haha, I know some people are probably pissed off about that. But anyway, um, we've had extremely warm weather, uh, way above average up until like now. And just finally the other day, it started to dip below the freezing point again. So uh, I just want to talk a little, little bit about riding in the snow. Hope you enjoy! Okay, so riding in the snow. What do you need to know? Okay, so there's a few things you need to consider. And in a lot of elements, it is kind of similar to riding in the rain. Um, okay, so let's talk, first of all, uh, it's probably a dumb idea to ride in the snow. Uh, so let's, let's preface the video with that. So, I mean, I don't know if I would necessarily recommend it to anyone, but, uh, for anyone that maybe doesn't have another mode of transportation or something, and they have to ride their bike, or someone who's just, you know, a total daredevil and wants to risk their lives on their bike, can totally try that out as well. Okay, road conditions. Of course, right now, I, I went out to ride pretty early when the snow is congregating, and the ground is frozen enough to allow the snow to accumulate, which is not necessarily a good thing. Um, but, you know, you're getting uh, about half of the snow that's hitting the ground here melting, and about half of it sitting on the asphalt. So kind of a bad combination, uh, as you guys know, slow I or snow is slick as hell, especially when you have tires like are on a bike and they're not necessarily snow tires, they're not meant to, to kind of let the moisture in like snow tires for a car and uh, still give you some traction when you're riding on snow, that's not the case with the bike, bikes are you know, primarily designed to ride in dry conditions. So you need to, first of all, be diligent of where you're riding. A good place to ride on the road is in the tire tracks of the vehicle in front of you. A lot of the time, the vehicle in front of you will push a lot of the, uh, the snow or moisture or whatever outside of their tire track. So if you can keep your tire in their tire track, that's a good start. So it's a good idea to ride in the tire track of the vehicle in front of you. Next thing I want to talk about is road markings. You see, you know, the yellow lines, the white lines, you have crosswalks, uh, all sorts of paint and, and whatnot on the road. You want to try and stay off of those as much as possible because those road markings, believe it or not, retain a ton of moisture on top of them. They have different properties as the road. They will not melt the snow as fast. And if you try and, you know, take a turn over one of those uh, and your bike's on an angle or you're accelerating hard as you're going over some road markings, it's going to break your traction really quickly and that can lead to a pretty bad day. So, uh, yeah, so road markings and in addition to that, sewers. So all sorts of sewers and metal grates that you may come across on the road. Be extremely diligent about these. I'm not saying you can't ride over them, period, but I'm saying when you do ride over them, make sure your bike is going as straight as possible. You do not want to be taking turns and you do not want to be accelerating hard over sewers or markings on the road. That's a bad idea. Um, any of you guys that have ever ridden in the rain uh, probably know exactly what I'm talking about. And just to give you a little example, say you're uh, taking a turn in the rain and you're just finishing off your turn, you're starting to get on the gas, not too aggressively, but you are getting on the gas and the road is wet, you will notice that back tire of yours will kick out very fast and you will lose traction rather quickly. So that is something to definitely be cautious of. So you gotta avoid these arrows on the road here. It's something you don't wanna ride across. And you know, especially when you're stopped like this, it's not such a big deal, but it, mainly when you're taking a turn and when you're accelerating, that's a recipe for disaster. Man, I'm getting a lot of funny looks from people. <laughs> Why the hell are you on your bike in the snow? Well, you know, when people are passionate about stuff, they make stupid decisions. That's why you hear a lot of stupid people not stupid people. You hear a lot of stupid decisions. Why did you get back with that girl after you? She cheated on you four times. It's because I love her. You know, it's the same thing. Why are you riding in the snow or in the rain? Well, it fucking, I love riding and uh, it's probably going to bite me in the ass. Um, but you can do everything you can to try and prevent that. So yeah. Um, anyway, uh, next topic uh, or next little tip or trick is 
when riding in the snow, try, or even in the rain for that matter, try extremely hard to have smooth movements of your uh, inputs of your bike. And I'm talking about throttle inputs, brake movements. Um, don't be dropping your clutch and giving your bike a huge, you know, spontaneous burst in torque because that's a really easy way to lose traction. And the whole point in, you know, keeping the rubber side down when riding in the snow or riding in the rain is you need to be smooth and you need to try and not break that traction. So I'm going to avoid the sewer here. You just want to be extremely careful and extremely smooth. So to give you some examples of what I'm just talking about here is as you're accelerating from stoplights, don't don't jump on the throttle and get to like 7,000 RPMs before you start letting out the clutch rather fast because that's a really easy way to lose traction. And you know, a lot of the time you'll be able to get away with not the smoothest inputs while you're going in a straight line. But the second, the second your bike starts to turn, even a few degrees and you break your traction, it's, it's, uh, it's an exponential effect and the back tire kicks out real fast and that's a really easy way to get sideways. Uh, I've almost high sided one time like that in the rain and I'll talk about that in another video. But uh, you just wanna be extremely, extremely smooth. Try and keep your revs nice and low. You want your bike's uh, inputs to be very, very predictable. You're gonna continue using both of your brakes, front and rear brakes. And uh, you're, yeah, you're gonna do everything you can. You're gonna do your part and hopefully you will uh, not catch any bad luck. That's really what you can do. So nice and smooth, very smooth. Keeping the revs low, slowly letting out of the clutch again when you're changing gears. You're gonna avoid the different types of markings on the road. Ooh, what a f dickhead. Nice fucking signal, asshole. You're gonna avoid the paints and sewage grates on the road. You are never, absolutely never, going to try and take a turn or accelerate hardly over road paints or sewer grates. That, that is probably the absolute easiest way to go down. Um, another thing that I'm gonna talk about in riding in adverse conditions like rain or snow is the visibility, that's actually a big deal. And some people are okay with just riding with their visor up, but at the same time, if it's raining hard enough, you really won't be able to see anything from your eyes um, because you're gonna get these uh, pellets of rain just pelting you in the face. And then same thing goes for the snow. Right now, um, my visor is extremely fogged up right now. And when I put my visor up, my eyes are watering uh, very hard. So I'm trying to keep a balance because it's about negative two degrees Celsius right now, which converts to this amount of Fahrenheit. If I have my visor up, my eyes water a lot and it makes visibility very difficult for me. But when I have my visor down, it's extremely foggy. So I'm accepting the vision of someone who has, who maybe like, you know, desperately needs glasses for driving. Sorry, that was probably not the smartest thing, but I didn't know when else I can get over. Aw, oh, fuck, what the fuck are you doing? You fucking assholes. That drives me nuts. People fucking change lanes without looking. If I had to come to an emergency stop right there, I would have been on the side of that car for sure. Especially in the stopping conditions of these roads. I don't have the best stopping conditions because the roads are wet and there's some snow on them. So another thing I'll quickly mention, tires are not designed to ride in these cold temperatures. Of course, unless you have snow tires, but I'll be honest, I don't even know if they make snow tires for motorcycles. So you guys, you guys got to be, you got to do your part if you want to be okay riding in the snow or rain or different kinds of adverse conditions. So these are my tips and tricks for you guys. Love you. See you in the next video. Peace. <laughs> Do you remember that time when I called my prof a fucking idiot? <laughs> yeah. Uh, shit. It wasn't very good. So here's a story. Hope you enjoy. Yeah.